actually Africans are very, very tolerant uh, along multiple fronts. Uh, African citizens from our surveys tend to be very tolerant of people from uh, different groups, uh, including people from uh, different ethnicities to themselves. Almost nine in 10 telling us that uh, they wouldn't mind uh, living next door to a neighbor uh, who is from a different ethnic group. Uh, they are also very tolerant of people from different religious backgrounds, different nationalities. Um, indeed, I think across most of France, I think the only people that are perhaps uh, not as tolerated uh, in, uh, people uh, that are from, uh, homosexuals, for example, only one fifth of Africans say they would do my they would not mind living it to a neighbor who is homosexual otherwise uh when you look at the different categories different religions ethnicities uh immigrants and even people living with hiv aids many africans tell us that they, they don't they don't mind having them as their neighbors <music>there are so many things that unite africans i mean from our surveys i can cite actually things that are not even as obvious africans by large majorities are committed to democracy uh, across really the, uh, the entire continent and this i think you know preference for democracy is something that is very common across the continent uh there are also you know other issues that unite africans i think um you know, apart from the governance side, I think uh, there's also, uh, there, there also, you know, in terms of demands that Africans want their governments to do, uh, there's quite a lot there that united them. Across the continent, we find that most Africans, you know, want their governments to prioritize, for example, job creation. Uh, most Africans want their governments to do a better job in reining in corruption. Many Africans also want uh, their governments to do a better job in managing uh, their economies. Uh, again, as we already said, I think there's really greater tolerance across the continent, and this is really something that is a unifying factor across all Africans. I think um, this this would be just some of the things that I would highlight. I can also think of other things about dissatisfaction with the uh, economic performance is something that is, is there. Africans want their political leaders to be term limited. They want, I think, uh, their presidency to, to also be uh, held accountable by parliaments and the legislature, uh, among other things. This is also another interesting question. The Afrobarometer does ask uh, African citizens from, you know, all the 34, 35 plus countries where we are currently doing service, whether uh, citizens are treated unfairly by government, especially based on their economic status. Uh, it looks like you know, the data shows us that, you know, Africans are pretty more or less evenly split in terms of unfair treatment by government. 49% tell us that they've, they never untreated fairly by their governments based on their economic status, but a similar number, 49% as well, tell us that they are sometimes or often or even in some cases always treated unfairly by government on uh, based on their economic status. So this applies, I think, to when Africans go to seek public services in you know in health centers in you know in seeking edu you know education services there is i think a sense that you know sometimes some individuals are treated unfairly based on their economic status but of course it's not only governments that treat people unfairly uh, you know, Africans, at least a good number of citizens on the continent, about one third, uh, they also say that they feel uh, treated unfairly by uh, other citizens uh, based on their economic status as well. Uh, and indeed, others also tell us that they feel they are untreated uh, fairly and fairly about 
about 20 percent so less than slightly less than 20 percent say that they are treated fairly by other citizens based on their uh you know their religious uh, religious identity and the about a quarter uh, say also they are treated unfairly by other citizens based on their ethnicity so long story short i think uh, there are more african citizens that feel are, are treated unfairly by their governments or at least government officials uh based on their economic status and maybe in a slightly fewer numbers feeling untreated unfairly by their own fellow citizens based on economic status uh religious state religious identity as well as uh, their ethnic identities <music>does matter uh, on many fronts. Uh, I already spoke earlier that the, uh, uh, the, the service that we do show that the Africans are very committed to democracy. But uh, as, as I think, you know, the theories and literatures from political science tell us that usually it's also individuals that have uh, better social, that come from better socioeconomic backgrounds that tend to be more committed to democracy and the democratic attributes such as voting, uh, you know, taking part in uh, other political events, including uh, reaching out to their political leaders, for example, writing letters. Uh, making contact with the political leaders like their legislators, their local government uh, or elected local government officials, uh, we find that I think socioeconomic status matters. Um, but also, I think in terms of how citizens are treated, or as I, as, as I just said previously, um, you know, there are some citizens that feel they are untreated and they are treated unfairly, both by their governments as well as by their fellow citizens, simply based on their socioeconomic status with individuals with a higher socioeconomic standing uh, being treated more fairly than those that uh, come from lower, that, that come from lower socioeconomic status. So yes, I think, you know, in many regards, uh, socioeconomic status does matter. We also see, I think, uh, as you know, you know, in, in, since from the when when COVID nineteen broke out uh, in 2020, we had to suspend our surveys, and when we resumed, we started to ask questions on COVID nineteen. And again, here we also see that the attitudes towards COVID nineteen are also influenced by socioeconomic status. Uh, people living in rural areas that are you know, socially and economically disadvantaged tend to look at COVID-19 as something that is more distant from them, something that affects, uh, in their view, uh, people with of, of higher socioeconomic standing in society. And we also see the same trends when it comes to COVID-19 uh, vaccinations, both from our data and indeed from other data sources. We see that uh, people coming with, with a higher socioeconomic standing in society are much more amenable, much more accepting of COVID-19 vaccines than people uh, that are in, from rural areas uh, with lower socioeconomic status in society. Uh, they are much more hesitant to accept the COVID-19 uh, vaccinations as well.